All right, Dr. George here. We're gonna um, I'm gonna show you how I set bands in the impression for a rapid palatal expander appliance. Um, <clears throat> I use Ormco bands with a headgear tube and a hook and a lingual lug. Uh, that all helps it stay in the impression. So what we'll do first is you can see the impression has the uh, headgear tube indent and that helps hold the band in place on the buckle. <clears throat> so they almost snap into place but if we left them just like this and poured them up in a snap stone they're gonna float into your plaster model and kind of disappear. So we don't want that. So what we do to help is on the lingual, I have a little pile of plaster, or uh, alginate, and we'll mix that with some water. We can just put that on the lingual here. This is going to do two things for us. It's going to help hold that band in place, but it's also going to create a little air space in the plaster model so that when we solder this, the band and the expander will heat up quicker from our torch and um, we'll be able to have our solder flow more easily. I put a little in the buckle too just to help hold that buckle too. This is a little rougher than what I usually do. Kind of press the band and make sure it is seated the way it ought to be. You don't want to fill up the whole band space. We want plaster, a uh, snap stone in this buckle part here of the band. If you push too hard on those bands, the bands will cut into the alginate and then it won't seat properly. So it won't fit the patient when it's time. We'll let that uh, alginate set and then this will be ready to pour open snap stone. So our alginate is set that's holding in the bands so you can see those are pretty secure they're not going to shake off when it starts vibrating. Um, I mix these up in snap stone. Not much to pour in of the model. But Now, this consistency for the snap stone. I'm going to put it on there. Get as many bubbles out as you can. I take the impression and give it a quick rinse with water just so that the algae is wet. And then So we 
we've separated our model out of the impression. Um, <clears throat> you can see the alginate here. And once we get that out of there, you'll have a void um, <clears throat> on the palatal part of the tooth. So I use a heavy bird beak, a heavy three prong, or I believe it's called a headgear plier. Lab knife, a regular three prong plier. Um, <clears throat> this is a forestident expander. I use these because they are smaller, um, contoured pretty well, and they have a snap lock in them. So when the patient turns it, they can feel the end of the turn. Uh, and they also will not unwind. So I'll show you how I bend one of these to prepare it for soldering. Make sure that the arrow is back. I'm just going to bend these with my fingers. These front two we're going to cut off and remove for a two banded RPE. So kind of bend those so that it's straight up and down. And then we see we need to spread them out. So we want this to rest just a couple millimeter or two off the pallet. We want it to be down the center line. You can mark it if you want. So you don't want it like this or like this. That's resting pretty well. If you were to look from behind here, see we've got clearance all around. See those aren't parallel and they should be pretty close to parallel so we'll bend these arms until we get it just about right here. Better. Is 
that's resting about right. We want these arms to rest against those teeth there. So I'm going to use the smaller three prong to at least get it close. expanders for my son so we can accept a little imperfection okay that's a pretty good fit so I just kind of double check everything make sure we got clearance once we saw it or nothing's uh, we'll also, when we remove these, we'll round out those sharp edges there. I keep these on uh, so that I have it for the soldering process. So if you, <clears throat> when I'm making these day after, this alginate will dry up, you can just leave it and solder. If uh, I'm making it same day, and we are on this one, I peel those out after I've made the uh, expander so that I know that my bars are not going to hit pallet anywhere. But if you don't remove this, it makes the soldering a lot more difficult. It doesn't want to flow because uh, that wet alginate keeps absorbing all the heat. And so you won't get the solder flowing on the band. When I do uh, <clears throat> heat this, what you'll see is use the tip of the flame and remove some of this plaster here. <clears throat> I like to heat right at the distal of this band and heat the band itself first. If you heat on the expander first, you will most likely overheat this part of the expander before the band is hot enough for the solder to flow. So direct your flame right here where my arrow, uh, where my um, <clears throat> knife is at. The solder will start to flow and then you can move your flame up here if you need to. I don't use heat shield or I don't even own heat shield. make holding arches and everything without it as well. Okay, so we got most of that alginate out of there. Um, <clears throat> we've got more flux. This one's dried up, so we'll just add water to it later and use it a different time. But we'll use our old jar of this. That's better. This is the flux I use. Um, this is the solder I use. I don't know why, but it seems to flow better than other solders I've tried. If you don't have flux on any of the pieces, parts of metal, the solder's not going to flow. So we will apply it everywhere we think we might want solder. Better use too much solder than not enough, or too much flux than not enough. Um, the only thing you have to be careful is not to get flux on the inside of the band or you will have solder flow there accidentally and then the appliance will not fit. This solder or this flux could stand to be mixed a little better, but it'll work.
There we go. So if you get a nice point to the flame, and we'll heat up the right it, put the tip of the blue part of the flame right on the band there. Once you see that the flux start to dry up and kind of bubble, then it's about ready to take your solder. Again, I'm heating here and not here. If I were to heat this part, this would overheat and turn red. And that's that did soften it before this is ever ready to take solder. You can see that solder start to flow on the band. So now we can kind of move our solder slice to follow heat. So we can move our heat over to where we want the solder to flow. And then I use those little arms there to adjust this. Getting right here, not right here. Because of all this plaster, that band is going to take just a little longer to heat than this uh, wire will on the RPE. It's taking a little longer to flow because like, there was still some alginate in there. It's done. We'll quench that in the water and then uh, polish it up. All right. So now we will uh, polish this up. I'll show you how we finish it. So, Tony, if you want to come in here, because we cooked the plaster, it's all crumbly, and we can just pry the bands off like this. They should pop right off. Clean all that off. We'll remove these. Uh, deals here so if you don't like your cameraman you can point this wire at him and shoot it that way. We'll remove those little nubs there. Anything that's sharp we want to smooth so I use this as a pumice impregnated rubber wheel on the lathe here. Um, we want to make sure everything's smooth to the tongue and anything that might or rub on the patient's mouth. So I even take this sharp edge there just in case that were to run into the palate, which it shouldn't, but in case it did, we'll smooth that. Both sides and then that corner there. Um, sometimes, in this case, we don't need to do this, but in a bigger mouth, if this arm didn't extend far enough to either the uh, upper D's or if they have uh, permanent dentition, I like to go to the upper fours, then we would flatten out this part and solder just a little arm onto there. Um, some people have said that they have those break off. I've never had one break off and thousands of them. But I think that's because I flatten it like that and so your solder joint is better than a round to round solder joint. And then we'll just smooth these edges. And then we'll take the knife and uh, the flux kind of hardens, turns into like 
glass almost. So if you flake that off first, so you can polish on the with the pumice, with the actual pumice on the rag wheel to get the final pumice for a final polish. This bar rests just a little bit high. I don't want to weaken my joint, but I am going to smooth that a little bit so it's a little more comfortable to his bite. And then we'll go over to the here's a rag wheel, pumice and water. I'll polish that up. I don't do any finer polish than that. You really don't need to. Anywhere you think it might need to be polished up. There it is, ready for the patient.